Forever God is with us in the book of Psalms, chapter 48, verse 14. The Bible says, For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Forever God is with us even prophesied in the book of Isaiah, chapter 7, verse 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. What is the meaning of the word Emmanuel or the name Emmanuel? In Matthew chapter 1, verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with, a, a, shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God is with us forever god is with us jesus christ is the manifestation of god's love at yun po yung fulfillment of what has been prophesied in the old testament bumaba ang ating diyos nanahan namuhay nakasama tayo naunawaan ang mga mga pain and suffering of mankind kailangan niyang ipanganak kailangan niyang mamatay kailangan niyang ilibing at mabuhay na muli upang mapagtagumpay at maipakita sa atin that He is victorious over death. He is victorious over grave. He is victorious over sin. Blessed be to God for that way, that means of salvation. And because of that act of the Lord Jesus Christ, we have been forgiven. We have been reconciled with the Father. Only if you believe, if, if, you, if you put your trust and faith to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as your one and only Lord and Savior. Good afternoon everyone. Welcome once again sa atin pong Friday worship service here at Dunes Baptist Church. We are live sa atin pong Facebook page, sa atin din pong uh, uh, website, uh, yung pong dunesbaptist.org, uh, and of course sa YouTube. Okay? And uh, welcome once again sa ating mga kapatid na naandito po sa ating pong church at sa ating pong face-to-face. -face. And uh, we continue to encourage each member of Duns Baptist Church na tayo po ay uh, pumunta na po sa church every Friday. Tayo po magsama-sama manambahan sa Panginoon dito po sa atin pong bahay-sambahan. Amen. So uh, tayo po ipatuloy sa atin pong uh, I Am Series. This is our fifth Friday. We praise and thank God for this wonderful claim, wonderful truth. Every time that the Lord Jesus Christ proclaim and claim the word I am, it pertains to His claim of His deity, of His Godhead. And for today, we will look upon the claim of the Lord Jesus Christ when He said that He is the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. And if you have your Bibles with you, I would like to invite everyone to please stand up and open it up in the book of John, chapter 11, verse 25 to 26. To our friends, to our brethren, sa inyong mga tahanan, you can see that in the right hand of your skin, okay? Nag-transfer po, hindi na po sa left hand, okay? Is it in the right hand? Amen? Sa inyong mga uh, tawag dito, video, nasa right hand na ba? Amen? Hindi sila sumasagot, yung mga <laughs> kapatid natin. How about yung naandito po sa, ano, sa church? Sa inyong uh, tawag dyan, sa inyong video. Kung inyong iyo open, nasa right hand na ba? Nasa right hand na? Ay, amen, amen. <laughs> Siguro nag -e amen yung ating mga kaibigan <laughs> nanonood ng live. Eh, hindi ko naman po naririnig. Amen. So, salamat po sa Panginoon. So, John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26. Let's all read together. Yung mga nanonood po, sabayin nyo rin po ako. Verse 25, ready, read. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believe in me shall never die. Believest thou this. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for this wonderful day. Salamat sa buhay. Salamat po sa aming kaligtasan. Thank you that we can call you our Abba, Father. Thank you for that great salvation. Thank you for that blessed hope. Thank you for a future secured in your hands. One day we will be with you in all eternity. And once we are here, O God, dalangin po namin ang aming pong sanctification process, ang aming pong uh, buhay pananampalataya na kami maging blessing, Panginoon, sa mga taong nakapaligid sa amin, 
kaming mga Kristiyano sama-sama nga aakay ng mga kaluluwa upang madala po sa iyo, Panginoon, kung sila ay mga ligtas. We praise you and we thank you for the message of the song. Thank you that you are our Emmanuel. You are with us. Thank you, O Lord Jesus Christ, for coming here on earth, offering yourselves, yourself, na matay ka sa krus, inilibing na buhay na muli. And because of that, kami po ay nagkaroon ng kaligtasan. Patawad sa aming mga kasalanan ngayon, Panginoon, na kami ilinisin at muli pagpalain kami as we continue in this series, the I Am series, such a blessing, O God, to undergo this series, O God. Salamat po, Panginoon. Muli, ikaw ang mapapurihan. Magligtas ka po ng kaluluwa at patuloy na hamunin ang mga mana ng palataya na iyalay ang mga buhay at paglingkuran ka. We thank you. We love you because you have first loved us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Please be seated as we continue. Again, ulit-ulitin natin as a uh, as a review. Okay, this will be just this will be a quick uh, preaching sermon. In uh, in the past uh, four weeks, okay, we have answered the question: Who is Jesus Christ? In every time he claimed. And he proclaimed, he said the word, I am. Okay? Kung sino siya. John 6.35 says, And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. He said, I am the bread of life. The source, the sustainer. He is the one who satisfies. He is the author of life. Sa kanya galing ang buhay. And because it is come, life came from Him, He is also the one who promised sustenance. He is the one who promised satisfaction. Okay? Sa buhay na ito. And of course, lalo pa nang naintindihan natin, ang ating soul has been satisfied knowing that we have that blessed hope, that future, that eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven. In John chapter 8, Verse 12, in our second Friday, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. He said, I am the light of the world. Why? Because sa buhay ng isang mana ng palataya, He is the sanctification. He is the one involved in sanctifying us through His word. Sanctify us, O God. Sanctify us through your word, the Bible says. And even, doon sa hindi mga mana ng palataya, He is also the light that will expose each and every unbeliever, each and every sinner, upang makita ng isang tao ang tunay, His true condition in the sight of God. And that is because of the light of the word of, the word of God. Every time that the word is being preached, It pierced the innermost part, yung kalalim-laliman na puso ng isang tao. It is like a two-edged sword piercing unto, unto the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the bones and marrows and the discerner of the true intent of our heart. Buhay po siya, convicting men of sin. Nakikita ng tao ngayon ang tunay niyang kalalagayan ng kanyang sitwasyon in front of God because Jesus Christ Himself is the light exposing us from our sin. And if you are already a believer of the Lord Jesus Christ, He's still the light that continuously sanctifying, that continuously uh, working in us in our sanctification. Okay? Tayo ginagawa ng salita ng Diyos upang makita natin ating sarili na maging holy sa harapan ng Panginoon. Ang kanyang pamantayan ngayon ang ating tinitignan kung papaano mamuhay bilang isang Kristiyano. Well, pleasing unto God. John chapter 10 verse 9 says, He is the door. I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pastures. He saves. When you enter in to His forgiveness, You exit from condemnation. And yung illustration natin doon sa book of Job, I'm sorry, sa book of Genesis in the life of Noah, 
120 years of preaching ni Noah every time he nailed that uh, uh, he hammered that nail naglaglagari siya ng mga kahoy binubuo ang ark but in the 120th year rain dumating ang ulan and so nagsimula ang flood at sinabi doon shut the door shut the door so God is long suffering when it comes to the sin of the world Naghihintay ang Panginoon, patient for every sinful man na siya mag-repent and turn to God. But one day, babalik ang Panginoon not as a Savior anymore, but a judge who will execute wrath. So wouldn't it be that it is your decision today for our friends who are not yet saved to enter into that door, enter into the forgiveness that the Lord Jesus Christ is offering. He is the door that Ito rin yung door na magsasyat one time, one day when the Lord Jesus Christ ay babalik the second time to judge the sinful world and to execute His wrath. Bago po mahuli ang lahat, may you have that decision today. Today is the day of your salvation. It is not an accident that you are watching right now or in the recorded sermon ay makarating to sa iyo. Because God loves you, He wants you to be saved. Ang mga members ng simbahan na ito, ay iniibig kayo at gustong makarating sa inyo ang mensahe po ng kaligtasan. That is why you are having this link right now at napapanood mo ang mga message na ito because we, this church, kami nananalangin, kami nagde-desire na kayo po'y mga ligtas. May you have that decision today. And in John chapter 10, verse 11, last week, I am the good shepherd the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. As a good shepherd, Psalm 23 summed it up. When the Lord Jesus shepherd, he pertains, he, he is saying that he is, he, he is, he was, he is the shepherd na binabanggit doon sa Old Testament. Prophesied by Isaiah, Zechariah, binanggit, and especially the psalm na binanggit ni King David in Psalm chapter 23 because King David understood how to be a shepherd. Embedded doon sa pagiging shepherd ang pagiging provider. Sabi sa Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Hindi tayo magkukulang. Yun ang meaning ng I shall not want. He make it me to lie down in green pastures. You see the illustration of a sheep na busog pagkakain. Kailangan siyang humiga. Ngunit itong ang, itong ang tupa, alam natin that parang isya siyang, uh, sa Tagalog, eh, parang bobo na hayop. Ano po, kailangan palagi na isya ay gagabayan o uh, 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 tawag dito kung ano ang dapat niyang gawin ay gagawin dapat ng shepherd sa kanya so pagkakain yung word na he make it me lie down in green pastures ay ipopor siya ng kanyang shepherd na mahiga dahil kailangang matunaw yung kanyang kinain he make it me to lie down in green pastures he lead me beside the still waters the, prov the provider God the provider shepherd because every ship, hindi niya gustong uminom doon sa rough waters, so dadalhin siya ng kanyang shepherd doon sa still waters for the ship to enjoy drinking water. He make it me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. And when the sheep tayo ay nadadapa sa ating kasalanan, it is also our shepherd who will restore us. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. For our sake, no, for His name's sake. Because the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is so precious. In Acts chapter 4, verse 12, neither is there any, any salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, every knee shall bow, every knee shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of 
the Father. He provides, He protects. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And we know that the illustration of that rod and that staff. The staff na may hook every time na pwedeng mahulog sa hill ang mga sheep, iyan ay gagamitin ng shepherd para sa paa, hihilahin para bumalik at huwag mahulog doon sa hill. The shepherd protects. And of course, the rod. Matigas na kahoy, bilog yung dulo. Pinangpapalo ng shepherd doon sa mga wild animals na gustong kainin yung mga tupa. May it be lion or bear or sin anumang mga dangerous animals. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And that is the message to us as ships, as ship. We are protected, we are comforted knowing na may rod at may staff ang ating Shepherd, thou anointed my head with oil, my cup ran it over. And as a shepherd, he is also the one who will preserve us until our glorification, until our time in heaven. Yung verse 6, kaduluduluhang verse ng Psalm 23, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. We are preserved in this life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Such a beautiful psalm. From our salvation to our sanctification to our glorification, He provides, He protects, He preserves. The shepherd in the Old Testament time, malinaw yan sa mga Israelites, sa mga Hudyo, sa mga Hebrew, that itong shepherd na ito ay patungkol doon sa kanilang Diyos. And when the Lord Jesus Christ claimed that He is the good shepherd, He is that shepherd na pinapatungkulan doon sa Old Testament. He claimed his Godhead, his deity. Every time he mentioned, he claimed the word, I am. And so the fifth I am that we will look upon today is the claim of the Lord Jesus Christ that he is, he was, he is, he will always be the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. So what we can learn from this amazing statement, what we can see, so that we can apply it in our lives, a simple doctrine, of course, of resurrection. But first, what is the setting that we can see bago binanggit ng Panginoon sa John chapter 11, verses 25 to 26, yung sinabi niyang, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay? Balik tayo sandali doon sa John chapter 11 verses 1 to 4. I didn't put that in your screen but I will just uh, read it sa inyo. Kung you have your Bibles, you can open it up in John chapter 11. The Bible says, Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. And in verse 4, when Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Sabi ng verse 4, this sickness is not unto death. Wait a minute, namatay po si Lazarus. But the Lord Jesus Christ says, this sickness is not unto death. Ano ibig sabihin? The Lord Jesus Christ acted not like a, not a, a reaction lamang or naging, naging reactive lamang siya when he knew that, that Lazarus is sick at mamamatay. It is a well-planned And, there, and there, later on, well-executed plan of God. Sasadyain ng Panginoon na talagang mamatay si Lazarus because later on, He will perform that greatest miracle that no human being can, in the first place, hindi natin kaya talagang mag-perform ng miracle. Because that is the preview. The resurrected Lazarus is the preview that later on, Jesus Christ will fulfill the same na siya rin ay magre-resurrect from the grave. And that gives us a very great 
comfort and assurance sa ating kaligtasan. Yung resurrection ay hindi lamang nangyari dahil aksidente na naging reaction lamang ng Panginoon. It was well planned from the beginning of time. Makikita rin natin mamaya yan sa account ni Abraham in the book of Genesis as we, sa, sa, sa last part ng ating sermon. Na even though tayo ay sa, sa pagkapanganak pa lang natin, tayo ay nahulog sa kasalanan na mayroong destinasyon ang mga tao because of sin. And yet, from the foundation of the world, God so planned salvation for mankind. And in this setting is the time na kung saan ay ipapakita ng Panginoon that He will show to the world doon sa mga taong nakapaligid. And right now sa atin, ito na yung fulfillment ng resurrection. And that gives us comfort and assurance na nung tinanggap natin ang ating Panginoong Yesus bilang ating Panginoon at tagapagligtas kasama sa package ang resurrection. Amen? Ang resurrection na mangyayari doon sa mga mana ng palatayang nauna sa atin and even us kung darating ang Panginoon ay Asama rin tayo doon sa papalitan ng katawan and we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ in all eternity. So doon nagsimula nagsimula ang istorya na ito. Yung magkapatid, pinadala ang message kay Jesus Christ that Lazarus was sick. Now, in our first point, We recognize and we understand that the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest of all personalities. Bakit ito yung first point natin? From the time na dumating ang Panginoon sa Jesus dito sa atin, sa lupa na matay, hanggang sa ngayon, He is still the greatest personality of all time. At hindi lamang nangyari yon nung siya ay pinanganak at bumaba dito sa lupa. He was that personality na pinaprophesy ever since from the Old Testament time. He was the one mentioned by Isaiah. Unto him, unto us, a child is given. A child is born, unto us a child is given. Wonderful Counselor, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Governments of the world will be under His shoulder. Sino siya? None other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The one prophesied by Micah na ipapanganak doon sa Bethlehem, none other than the Lord Jesus Christ. The one who speak to Daniel, he was that personality from the Old Testament time. He was that greatest personality and he is the greatest per the great personality ni ngayong kapanahunan natin in the days to come why is it that he is he was and he is siya yung palaging pinag-uusapan ang ating Panginoong Jesus in the verse that we have read Jesus said unto her I am the resurrection and the life he, he that believeth in me though he were dead yet he shall live Now, puntahan natin muli kung papaano nagsimula itong story na ito. What led to this moving scene? Here, Jesus declares His deity, His divinity, His Godhead. In John chapter 10, verse 30 to 33, siya nag preach maraming nakikinig. Sabi niya, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone Him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you, From my Father, for which of those works do ye stone me? Verse 33, The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, maketh thyself God. Right after Jesus Christ claims his Godhead, immediately his enemies plot to kill him. Not because... Sabi dito, not because of any works or good work na mayroon kang ginagawa, but because of your claim that you are the Son of God. They plot to hurt Him, to kill Him because they know that the Lord Jesus Christ is telling the truth. 
because they have heard, they have witnessed the many miracles ng ating Panginoong Hesus. At alam yun ng mga pariseyo, alam yun ng mga hudyo na kung saan ang Diyos lamang ang may kayang, ang kayang gumawa ng mga miracles na pineperform ng ating Panginoong Hesus. Nagtatalo sa kanilang isip, sa kanilang puso, yung mga ginagawa ng Panginoong Hesus na mga miracles. And so, ayaw nilang tanggapin yung claim na yan, but they know that because of those miracles na ginawa ng Panginoong Hesus, totoo, tama, rightful claim ang sinasabi ng Panginoong Hesus ng kunyang sinasabi na He is the Son of God. After that, the Lord Jesus Christ ministered to many in beyond the River Jordan, and there, may maraming mga nangaligtas. People turned to God after hearing His message, and later on, nakarating ang mensahe sa Kanya about Lazarus, who was sick. We see, we so we can see that in John chapter eleven, verse one, binasa natin kaniya na a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary, and her sister Martha. Intentionally, the Lord Jesus Christ waited for two days before leaving to Bethany. Walang pagmamadale ang panginoon. Kaya ng sabi ko hindi yun supposed to be. Magreact agad siya. Lazarus is his friend. Actually, Jesus wept nung namatay si Lazarus. But intentionally, nag-wait siya ng two days. Hinintay niya talaga intentionally na mamatay si Lazarus. Ang sabi doon sa verse 6 ng Gen chapter 11, when he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Kung parang reactive lamang ang Panginoon Jesus, dapat magmamadali siya na puntahan. Kung ang purpose niya ay pagalingin yung karamdaman ni Lazarus, kaya sabi doon sa verse 4, This sickness is not unto death. Why? Because the Lord Jesus Christ will resurrect Lazarus. And so the disciples learned that Lazarus was already dead in verse 14, then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And what we can see dito sa account na ito, doon sa pangyayari na ito, is the response noong kapatid ni Lazarus named Martha. That we can relate. We are also the modern day Martha. Look at the response of Martha in verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother hath not died. So ganun din tayo, katulad tayo ni Martha. Yung ating pananaw, yung ating view, yung ating response sa mga sitwasyon na ating buhay is yung superficial. But not our God. Iba ang, ang, iba ang paningin, iba ang, ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa mga sitwasyon. And so it encourages us to trust our God in many situations of our life. Even though it's difficult. Anong sabi ng Panginoon sa verse 23? Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Imagine kung nandun tayo sa sitwasyon din na yun. Narinig man natin itong sinabi ito ng Panginoon. And just like Martha, nagbigay ito kay Martha ng shock. Even though may konting doubt sa puso ni Martha, but Because it is the Lord Jesus Christ na nagsalita, alam ni Martha that things will be better as she heard this word coming from the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And so it is to us as well. Every time we hear the word of the Lord Jesus Christ promising us something through His word, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is always up to the occasion. Ano mang sitwasyon natin sa buhay, we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is up to the occasion because our God teaches us not to fear in every situation of our life. In fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7, Paul said to Timothy, "For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind." Ano mang sitwasyon natin sa buhay, yes, we understand. I understand iba-iba ang sitwasyon, but hindi binibigay sa atin ang Panginoon ng spirit of fear. But of power and love and of a sound mind, the Bible says, 
Kaya yun din ang sabi ng psalmist sa Psalm 23 verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Why is it that the Lord Jesus Christ is the greatest of all personalities? Not because of what He can offer to us temporarily, not of what He can offer to, to Martha, yung obvious na nire-require kasi nila Martha is, sabi nila Martha, kung naandito ka lamang Panginoon, dapat sana ay kung naandito ka ay buhay pa yung aking kapatid. Dahil alam nila na kaya ng Panginoong Yesus na pagalingin yung karamdaman ni Lazarus. But God demands that we trust Him in all situation in life. Even though yung ating mga request sa Kanya, sometimes ay hindi niya sinasagot, He still asks us to trust Him sa Kanyang gagawin sa Kanyang buhay. Sa ating buhay, doon din sa sitwasyon nila Martha. It is not that what, it is not, He is the greatest of all personality because of what He can do temporarily here on earth but in the, in this life but what he can do and what he can offers eternally yun yung reason kung bakit bumaba ang ating Panginoong Hesus upang masolusyunan yung problema ng sangkatauhan not on this world but that eternal issue eternal problem of our soul and how the Lord Jesus Christ can perform and fulfill that because he holds the greatest of all powers. Hindi magagawa yun ng ating Diyos kung siya ay walang kapangyarihan. Hindi mapupulfill, mag-execute ang mga miracles na yun kung hindi sa Diyos, kung hindi niya hawak-hawak ang kapangyarihan na sa Diyos lamang mayroon. Hindi available na kung sa kay ninomang normal na tao. Sometimes, Lord Jesus Christ is being treated in many religions or many belief systems just as a friend. Natatawagan mo lamang, He is just my friend. But have we looked upon this truth that our Lord Jesus Christ is the God of the universe? He holds the power, nasa Kanya ang kapangyarihan. Both here on earth and in heaven. Again, in verse 25, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. See? Though he were dead, yet shall he live. That itself is a very powerful statement. Kahit na siya'y namatay na, siya ay mabubuhay na muli. Sino lamang ang nakapagbanggit ng salita na yan? Have we or any other personality or any human being can claim, can state, can say that statement? No one. It is only the Lord Jesus Christ because He is God. Na kahit na matay na, yet they will live. You will live. You will resurrect. This statement embodies power, authority. And when you look at our God, our Lord Jesus Christ, holding this power, the God of the universe, And then when he says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee, ano ang impact nun sa atin? I hope and pray that the impact is comfort, assurance. Nung binagid niyang, yes, kahit na ng mga namatay na sila, mabubuhay na muli. Kaya ang sabi ni Paul doon sa mga taga sa Salonika, comfort yourselves one another with this word. We are encouraged, we are admonished even to, to, to treat the word of God in, in all its, in, in sincerity, in seriousness, and in claiming this power itself coming from the Lord Jesus Christ. Sineseryoso natin yung mga ganitong klaseng claim ng ating Panginoon upang magbigay sa atin ng comfort, ng assurance in this life. And the life ahead. So that our hope, yung blessed hope na binabanggit sa Bible ay laging buhay sa ating mga puso. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Imagine ninyo kung tayo ay nandoon sa paligid o sa ngayon ay naririnig natin both directly from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. Mabubuhay siyang muli. 
whatever advancement in technology or advancement dun sa medical profession, yet still no one can ever claim, declare this statement, bubuhayin ko siya because of the medical technology or advancement right now. No one. This is such a powerful statement coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. Again, a claim for Godhead. Again, a claim for deity. And so Martha was stunned, shocked at this pro uh, promise of the Lord Jesus Christ. In verse 23, that her brother Lazarus shall rise again. Kaya nga ang tanong din kay Martha, di ba? Maniniwala ka ba? Will you believe? Sabi ng Panginoong Jesus. Because Martha is thinking of that future resurrection. Yung eschatology ni Martha is correct. Ang iniisip niya is yung future resurrection. So somehow Martha is limiting the power of the Lord Jesus Christ on that particular account. But even Martha or us, sometimes, most of the time, we limit God's promises. We limit God's promises to us, not knowing that every promises ng Panginoon dito sa Kanyang salita, He will fulfill it. Because He cannot lie, our God cannot lie. It's about time that we take the word of God seriously, especially dun sa kanyang mga claim at sa kanyang mga promises sa atin. In Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent, hath he said, and shall he not do it, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? The same God, Ni Titus, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. And in Hebrews 6, 18, that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation who have pled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. And so when the Lord Jesus Christ says this word, na itinuturo ni Apostle Paul sa kanya mga epistle at nakararating sa atin ngayon, how are we treating this promise of resurrection? In 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him? Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comport one another with these words. Just like Martha, the same question ng Panginoong Jesus ang binibigay niya sa atin ngayon. Will you believe? Tayo ba'y naniniwala sa pangako ng resurrection ng Panginoon? Wherefore, comport one another with these words. It's only the Lord Jesus Christ who has the power to raise the dead, the greatest power on earth. And from His mouth, kanyang sinabi ito, before siya ay magpa-umakit sa kalangitan, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Stop doubting our God. Stop doubting His power in your life. Believe. Why? Because He resurrected from the dead. When we start putting this great truth in our life, it motivates us, it pushes us to do more for God. Mawawala ang ating mga fear of the future of our daily battles in life. Because hindi, niya kaya, hindi siya kaya magsinungaling because our God cannot lie. At ano ang pamantayan natin that He can fulfill His promise? Well, He resurrected from the grave. He resurrected Lazarus. 
all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Kilala mo ba ang Panginoong Jesus in this context? Every time we saw, we have this doubt in our life, this fear in our life. We undermine the power of our God. Yung mga worry natin sa buhay, we undermine the power of our God. Let's start living this life, this Christian life, claiming this power of God in our day-to-day life. He is the God of resurrection. He is the greatest of all personalities. He is the greatest. He holds the greatest of all powers that no individual human being can possess. Siya lamang ang mayroon at nasa Kanya lahat yun. When he says in Matthew 28:18 that all powers is given unto him both in earth and in heaven. And as we add in this last point in verse 26, Jesus extends the greatest of all promises from this life and to life everlasting. Ano sabi niya kay Martha? And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? It is also the question to us. Naniniwala ba tayo? And so start living this light, believing this promise of God. Comforting us, assuring our life. The verse says, shall never die. Literally, itong katawan natin ito ay talagang mamamatay. But of course, ang sabi nga din ng Bible ay para lang tayo natutulog because of this doctrine of resurrection. So therefore, talagang ha, kung mamatay man ang katawan na ito, it's not an issue anymore for a true Christian. Because of the doctrine of resurrection. Because of the doctrine of a changed body, na glorified body na ibibigay ng ating Panginoong Jesus. Kailangan lang na palitan ng Panginoon ng bagong katawan, glorified body na mag-stand doon sa glory of God in heaven. So ang event lang, yung kamatayan ng katawan na ito, itong physical, literal body na ito, is event lamang sa buhay natin. But that's not the end. And when we see that truth embedded in our hearts, that gives us comfort, assurance. Nawawala ang ating fear, nawawala ang ating mga takot doon sa kamatayan na yun. Kasi isang, isang event lang yun doon sa eternity, doon sa mahabang chapter ng eternity. Natin with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why Paul says, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. At kapag naintindihan natin yung katulad ni Paul, kaya siya busy sa paglilingkod sa Panginoon. Kasi kapag dumating yung time na yon, good for him, he understand, he will be with the Lord Jesus Christ. And so whilst waiting for that, he is busy serving God. That's the context of the Christian life. Habang hindi pa dumarating yung appointed time na yon, na mamamatay tayo sa katawan na ito, then we live for Christ. And when it comes, good for the Christian because that's our day one in heaven. You see, may talo ba ang tunay na Kristiyano? Wala. We are all victorious. Patagumpay na tayo sa lahat ngayon at sa hinaharap. Now and in the future, have you set your mind? sa context na ito na itinuturo sa atin ng Panginoon, coming from the doctrine of resurrection, if not yet, do so. You are blessed. We are blessed as Christians having these promises from our God. The verses shall never die. Even though yung katawan na ito, sabi nga ng psalmist, 70 to 80 years, The days of our years are three score years and ten, and if by reason and strength they be four score years, yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off, and we fly away. So the prophecy of this psalm is actually being fulfilled sa ating kapanahunan ngayon. Di ba? 70, maximum 80. Nandiyan tayo sa range ngayon sa ating mga kapanahunan as we speak. But Jesus promises life that lasts. Yes, ipipikit sandali ang mga mata. Ibabaon ang katawan na ito. Sabi sa Thessalonians, one day babalik ang Panginoon, i-resurrect ang mga nangamatay na. 
bibigyan ng glorified body and we will be with the Lord. That's the doctrine of resurrection, a promise of the Lord Jesus Christ that life does not end. It's everlasting. Everlasting. It's eternal. Everlasting life, eternal life is better than the 70 or 80 years or even 100 years. And that everlasting life is ours because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is a message also of salvation. Before you can have that claim, that promise of resurrection, you must be saved first. This is the message to you, our friends right now, and our relatives who are not yet saved, you are not assured. Every time you have been asked with a question, saan po pupunta ang inyong kaluluwa kung dumating ang kamatayan po sa inyo? At yung sagot, hindi ko alam. I am not sure of, I cannot answer that, even answer that question. There is about time that you ponder upon this truth. There is hell, the destination for those who rejected God. And by the way, that is the default destination of the whole of mankind because of our sins. But praise be to God, He sent the Lord Jesus Christ because God requires the perfect sacrifice and the perfect payment, and we cannot do that. The Lord Jesus Christ did it for us. He became sin. He became the curse for us. The whole wrath of God is upon His shoulder on that cross. And when He said, it is finished, there is our salvation. God's requirement has been fulfilled when he offered himself to the cross. So do you know the greatest person, not just only in historical records, he is the one who said that he is the resurrection and the life. Are you resting in his great power? All powers is in his hand, both here on earth and in heaven. Are you still trusting yourself or you're trusting the government or are you trusting this temporal world? May you start trust our God who holds all the power and authority both in this life and that life to come. He is the one who extends this promise both here in our temporal life and in our eternal life. The question is, to our friends and our loved ones who are not yet saved, do you have that everlasting life? Do you have that promise of resurrection with you? May you decide today how beautiful that place is. Every Christian has their own mansion in heaven. The Bible says in John chapter 14, we, are, we will be walking in the streets of gold. And we will have a glorified body, no more pain, no more sickness. And that's eternal. On the other hand, there is that eternal place as well called hell. Every time that you decide to trust yourself and your good works and your religion, pag tinanong ka siguro naman ay pupunta ako sa langit dahil mabait ako, you are undermining the, the, the very precious blood and body of the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you. Ito ang Panginoong Jesus, ito ang pamantayan ng kaligtasan, katawan niyang napako sa cross, holy, God Himself, incarnate, in, bumaba at nagkatawang tao, at inalay ang kanyang buhay upang tayo maligtas, upang tayo mapatawad sa ating kasalanan, and yan tatapatan mo ngayon ng iyong mabubuting gawa. At sasabihin mo na kaya ka pupunta sa langit dahil ikaw ay mabait, dahil ikaw ay may, may relihiyon. You are actually putting that standard na mayroon ka doon sa standard ng Diyos na napakataas. Diyos mismo na nagkatawang tao para pagbayaran ang ating kasalanan and then itatapat mo lamang is yung mabubuti mong gawa at yung yung relihiyon para ikaw ay maligtas. You're undermining the act of the God Himself. That is why it's only by faith Ang sabi sa Ephesians chapter 2, verse eight, verses 8 and 9, kaibigan, For by grace are you saved, not of works. It is not by yourself. It is the gift of God, 
not of course not lest any man should boast. Precious. Seryoso ang Panginoon kasi sa kasalanan. He is serious in dealing with sin. That's why seryoso din. Napakahalaga. Very important. High price din yung kapalit. Yung kanyang inoffer na salvation. Yung means ng salvation. And that's His precious Son na kailangan mamatay sa cross. Tanggapin lahat ang shame because napaka-valuable ng ating kaluluwa. That's how precious the means and the way of salvation is. Para tapatan mo lamang ng mga effort mo sa lupa para ikaw ay mapunta sa kalangitan. Don't do that. It's an abomination unto God. At kung ikaw naman ay mana ng palataya na, at alam mo na ganun ka precious yung salvation na tinanggap mo through that finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, yung kanyang mismong katawan ang inalay para ikaw ay mapatawat at ikaw ay magkaroon ng buhay na walang hanggan. And yet, namumuhay kang patuloy sa kasalanan. Ano ang value ng kaligtasan na tinanggap mo? Ganun ka na lamang mamuhay right now, kapatid. That sin just comes in and comes out of your life. Hindi mo ba alam na ganun ka-valuable yung ipinanglinis sa kasalanan mo? Kaipakapatid. That's how valuable yung ipinang, ipinangbayad para, mapag, para ikaw ay malinis at ikaw ay ma-reconcile doon sa Ama. And yet, ganun na lamang ang ating pamumuhay. Without regard doon sa precious payment, sa precious blood and body of the Lord Jesus Christ who saved us. The doctrine of the bodily resurrection, mga kapatid, is not a new thing. Sabi ko nga, hindi lamang ito parang reaction ng Panginoon because of a dead Lazarus. It was there from the old times. In the life of Abraham, the doctrine of resurrection, the plan of God to resurrect His people has been revealed. Medyo mahaba itong mga verses ito, but I want you to join me in, in reading this. Salitan po tayo. I will start with verse 1 and then salitan tayo. Verse 1 says in Genesis chapter 22, And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Kayo po sa verse 2. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with us, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Verse 7, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for burnt offering? And they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Verse 11, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am I. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Abraham 
Verse 15, And an angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. Verse 17, That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Let's read together verse 18. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. Such a beautiful part of the scripture when it comes to our God as the Jehovah Jireh. Amen? Mostly, the message na ating maririnig sa mga preaching is kapag ito ang, ang tema is our God who is the God of provision. That God will provide. And indeed, yun talaga ang nakita natin doon sa Genesis 22.14. As I repeat to you, and Abraham called the name that is Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. But, the deeper, the deeper message nitong account na ito is not doon lamang sa context ng provision. It is actually about resurrection. Before Abraham understand that God is the God who provides, he already understood the doctrine of resurrection dito sa account na ito. Because yun ang mas mahalaga. That's the most important thing na kung saan ipinapakita na ng Panginoon kay Abraham. The preview of His resurrection in the future. The preview of God's salvation to mankind through this account. Not only in the context of provision. Saan po natin makikita yung aking sinasabi in Hebrews chapter 11 verses 17 to 19 as I read to you before we end. By faith Abraham when he was tried offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom I wa if it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called, look at verse 19, accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead, from whence also he received him in a figure. Hindi mahirap kay Abraham na i-gawin yung inuutos ng Panginoon because alam ni Abraham that God will resurrect Isaac. The doctrine of resurrection has been there from the beginning of time. The doctrine of salvation has been there from the beginning of time. So well planned by our God, fulfilled and executed in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a beautiful thing to understand sa ating kapanahunan ngayon na yung ating mga mahal sa buhay na mga mana ng palataya ng Panginoong Jesus, they will be resurrected. Kung tayo rin, mamatay, hindi pa bumarating ang Panginoon, will be resurrected. Asama natin lahat yung mga naunang mana ng palataya at yung mga mana ng palataya pa in the future. At iyon ang motivation, iyon ang encouragement din, iyon ang submission at obedience ni Abraham. Knowing that Isaac will be resurrected. Bago pa lamang yung provision of the ram na ibinigay kay Abraham at siya niyang ginamit for the offering. Also picturing out the Lord Jesus Christ as the final lamb, as the lamb who will be sacrificed for the sin of the world. Praise be to God that we have the Bible. Amen? Praise be to God that it has been revealed to us. Alam nyo, hindi ito na, kumbaga hindi ito na didecipher ng ating kaaway. Ngunit tayo having the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. Aren't you blessed? Aren't you glad? Na every time na binabasa natin ang salita ng Diyos ay nare-reveal ang mga katotohanan na ito. Na nagbibigay sa atin ng hope, ng comfort, ng assurance. Na alam natin na hindi present right now, hindi available sa unbelieving world. That's why they are hopeless, troubled, fearful. Huwag nating kalimutan. Ang salita ng Diyos sa ating buhay, and every time 
We have heard the truth. Apply it in our life. Stand by it. Cling to the promises of God that gives us that joy, that peace, that hope, that assurance that this world cannot offer to us. Praise be to God that He is the God of resurrection. He is the God of life. Let us all pray. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for this message, such a wonderful truth. Salamat po, Panginoon, sa iyo pong dakilang plano from the foundation of the world. From the time of our salvation, our, even our sanctification through your spirit, nasa sa amin ngayon ang kompleto mong salita, ang iyong Biblia, who will continuously guide us, remind us, teach us, instruct us, rebuke us in our sanctification. And again, it is your word who gave us that assurance that one day we can have this glorified body. Those believers before us na nangamatay na will be resurrected. Such a blessing to understand this truth and to claim these promises. Salamat po, Panginoon, because pumabaka na buhay sa lupa in human flesh, ipinako, inilibing, but in the third day have resurrected. We praise you because all powers and authority is in your hands, both here on earth and in heaven. And such a blessing to understand that when we got saved, we are yours. You are ours. We are now in Christ. Your blood ay kami binalot. Kung kaya kami ay hindi na nakikitang makasalanan, we are now justified in the sight of God. And because kami kabilang na sa iyo, Panginoon, ang mga pangako mo when you say that you will never leave us nor forsake us, do not be fearful. Lahat ito, Panginoon, ay pwede namin i-claim sa buhay po na ito. And much more, the promise of eternity, the promise of resurrection, the promise of eternal life is now clearly visible, Panginoon. Nakikita na po namin ang mga katotohanan po na ito. Even though hindi pa po dumarating, niyayakap na po namin, Panginoon, that one day, with all the saints, kaming lahat ay makakapiling mo doon sa lupang pangako. May this be a true and strong motivation for us to win souls, to witness, to pray for our loved ones, to our friends, for our friends, to use our life to serve you, to be faithful in your church, in our giving, in our praying, in our devotion, in winning souls, in discipling early Christians and pray for one another. Dahil po sa mga katotohanan na ito, Panginoon, ay pinaalam mo sa amin, you have no obligation for you to reveal all these things to us and yet, ipinaalam mo po sa amin because you love us. May we return that love with a faithful and genuine love of service to you. Lifting up your name in this place, living a life well pleasing unto you, condemning sins in our life. And live a life worthy of our salvation. May you be glorified in our midst to so our friends once again. You can have a resurrection promise if you will put your trust and faith to Jesus Christ today as your one and only Lord and Savior. Huwag mong tapatan ng iyong mabubuting gawa, ng iyong relihiyon, o anumang bagay na kaya mong gawin ang pagpunta mo sa langit because the way to heaven has been paid with such a high and precious price. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ Himself, God incarnate, God in human flesh. Inoffer ang kanyang buhay. It is His will to be, to be nailed on the cross, not an accident or not an incident or a result of the decision of men. He came here purely to die for you and I. 
may you put your faith today, your trust to that mean of sal means of salvation that has been offered to you today. And all the promises in the Word of God, that resurrection promise will also be yours. One day, you will be with the Lord Jesus Christ as He promised. May you have that decision today. And to our fellow Christians, may we start living this life worthy of our salvation. Our salvation has been paid with such high price. Walang katapat na pwedeng ipambayad doon sa ginawa ng Panginoong Jesus and yet you are living as if you are not saved at all. Offer your life to God. Serve Him. Be faithful to your church. Iwanan, iwaksi, condemn yung mga kasalanan sa buhay. You are now a new creature na mumuhay sa iyo ang Panginoong Jesus. Ang iyong katawan na hindi mo na pag-aari. It has been bought with a high price. It is owned by God. He purchased you. You are a new creature right now, kapatid. Anong ginagawa mo sa buhay na iyan? Father in heaven, we thank you once again for the preaching of your word. May you save souls today. May you encourage, rebuke, instruct, admonish your people. Lalo na po sa panahon na ito that we can see surrounding us signs of, you, of your second coming. May you find us busy fulfilling and doing your work. In this we ask in the name of our powerful, mighty God, the Lord Jesus Christ, His people will say, Amen and Amen. To the members of Duns Baptist Church who are listening online, you can now uh, go to our Discord channel para po sa ating mga panalanginan. And once again, sa ating pong mga nakinig, may God bless you, have a blessed weekend, and also a blessed week. See you all next Friday. And watch out dun po sa ating mga recorded sermon ay papadala po sa inyo. Salamat po, God bless you all.